Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us today. We have a great, exciting webinar talking all about SoundVision version 3.6, just released on the L Acoustics website. Sam Proctor, you're joining us from somewhere in the world. Welcome. Thank you, Scott. I'm here from York in the UK. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, Sam, it was great to see you. Uh, we've actually had a chance to return to travel the last couple of weeks, so we got to hang out in Marcoussi back at uh, Paris headquarters of L Acoustics just a couple weeks ago. And you showed me a bit of a preview of this new version of Sound Vision that we're sharing with the world today. Uh, yes, I did. We've been working um, quite in, uh, quite uh, extensively on Sound Vision 3.6 and the new features that it brings to everyone. So it's yeah. um, I look forward to actually demonstrating the power of this today. And, and these features are, are quite interesting. Uh, the last couple of versions of Sound Vision, we've had quite a number of features that are really targeted what end users are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and, and tools that will help them. So can you tell us a little bit about 3.6 and, and the new features? I can indeed. So um, when thinking about the features for SoundVision 3.6 quite a few months back, there was a real desire to try and be able to implement pullback configurations within SoundVision. Um, I say this, this hasn't just been a desire for a few months now. This has been years of wanting to be able to do this properly. However, this proved such a large challenge as um, implementing a pullback meant you're introducing forces from both sides of an array. You're affecting all of the connections differently. So you're placing certain certain um, connections under compression, others during tension, uh, under tension. And this effectively, it's a whole new calculation that needs to be done to model this correctly. Right, and so, so with a pullback, we have a normal array that would be hanging, what, from two points on top. And now we're going to change that and put a point on the bottom to help get us into more extreme deployments. And, and we've authorized that before, but we've not fully calculated that in SoundVision. Is that the correct statement? That's there? correct. So, so effectively, we needed to provide an interim solution to allow users to, to model correctly, to be able to design the system they want to implement. So... Up until now, the solution was to be able to specify the use of a pullback. And what this did effectively was override the site angle warning so that a user may enter a larger negative site angle. However, the issue is that it still meant we couldn't properly model the loads on both pickup points. We couldn't understand what was fully happening in this array. So up until now, we still had to speculate that the user still had to very carefully make sure the configuration followed the guidelines of the manual. Now SoundVision can can be the guide as to what can and can't be implemented. Oh, that's really great. So I'm assuming you're going to show us a little bit about these new pullback features? Yes. So let's first demonstrate what we were able to achieve with SoundVision 3.6. So I have an empty project here just with a flat um, floor for my audience. And first thing I'm going to do is just Add a K2 source here. Going to add a negative sight angle and just very quickly open up the angles a little bit. As a user, I want to achieve a large negative sight angle because I need to cover maybe straight down. So sure. I design my system. I can enter a larger negative sight angle, such as minus 30, and I can continue designing here. The issue is. Currently, we have a warning because the center of gravity of this array is outside of that of the pickups. So this is when usually we need to implement a pullback to be able to achieve this configuration. So to do this, it's nice and easy. All we do is select the very last enclosure of an array. And if we click on this, you'll see we have a compatible pullback element. So here we have the K2 rig bar. So it's as easy as selecting this, and you will see the rig bar is added underneath the last enclosure. And now we can actually visualize that pullback element in the 3D scene. So you'll see the warning has gone away because we can now achieve this, achieve sure, this system this is, in real life. Right. So previously it was warning us that the system, was it, was it dangerous or was it just that you, you, there, it was impossible to do? Is that correct? Um, just that it was impossible to do. So when we get a warning here, so first of all, to demonstrate that, I'm just going to remove the pullback element. So to do this, we select the pullback element again, and we select the dash. So this is effectively saying we want nothing in this place. So we remove that. 
And the first thing you notice here is that the array moved. What we've done is we've effectively taken away a pickup point. So the number of pickups is set to one here because we just have one pickup point here. We could have tried to be clever and try and automate this to jump back to two motors on the top rigging element, if that was possible. However, first of all, it depends on the main rigging element on the top, whether it can have two motors. But also the likelihood is you've implemented a pullback element because you needed to achieve a sight angle you couldn't in the first place. Sure. So even if we could set two motors here, it would it would have to jump to a different sight angle anyway. So what we've done here is make this jump obvious so the user can then specify if they want to change the number of pickups, the sight angle, so on so forth. or change their configuration. Got it. So the question you asked me before was how did I know what the warning was doing? Sure. The short answer is experience. I've run through this demo several times, <laughs> but that's not a good enough answer, obviously. Um, so the idea is here, if I go back to my two motors on the top, in fact, you can see it already, I have a warning here. Sure. I also have the sources flashing red in the source list to indicate that something is wrong here. If we hover over it, we see a tooltip saying there's at least one mechanical warning. Look at the mechanics view to view the messages. If we click on the red box here, we also see a list of um, the warnings available. And clicking on the source directly from this drop down list will open the mechanics view. However, I'm going to hold off on that just, uh, just to keep you waiting, really, because we're going to have a dedicated section just to look at the safety messages Ooh. and what they are, how they appear, and show the updates that we've introduced. So I'm just going to um, delay answering that question for a little bit. Um, one more note as well on the pullback element is if we add a pullback back to our configuration and we'll set the sight angle again, we can now change the number of enclosures on this source. And as long as the pullback element is still compatible with the last enclosure, this will remain in place. So we can change the number of enclosures and we see oh, our pullback really sure. still remains. The only time it will be removed is if the last enclosure is changed to a non-compatible one for the pullback element. So we see here, if we implement a CARA downfill, we see the pullback is automatically removed. Got it. However, now we can still select the CARA 2 and add a CARA pullback to achieve oh, a more extreme angle. This, the extreme angle, and we can see the pullback element added to the bottom there. Oh, that's really great. So we've got the pullback. We see how to put it on. You showed us how to take it off. Um, how do we start to digging into a little bit more, like whether it's safe, uh, what the weights are, the dimensions, so on and so forth? OK, so ultimately, all of this is done in the mechanics view. So everything I've demonstrated so far answered our initial objective of being able to implement a pullback within SoundVision. However, this may look like a very simple feature. A lot of work went into actually being able to produce this. And while we did this, we scratched our heads a little bit on how to try and get more into this update. So we see this in the mechanics view. To start off with, I'm just going to implement a very simple array that we can look at. So I'm going to do the same thing by adding a K1 array. Just introduce a negative sight angle and open the angles. So we can open the mechanics view by clicking on the icon in the top of the toolbar. And we see our new view here. To make this easier to swap between the views, I'm just going to dock this on top of my 3D scene. So all that's done is add the tab on the bottom so I can now swap between my two views for demonstration purposes. That's great. So if we look at the mechanics view, we will see this looks slightly different from the mechanics view we had in the past. The first thing we did is we wanted to have a clearer layout of the information. Um, so we've separated this into three very clear sections. We have safety on the top, physical properties in the middle, 
and we have everything related to the pickup points on the very bottom section. If we have a look what each section actually contains, the safety should be the number one priority. So this is why this moved up to the top. If you have a warning message, this will appear at the very top of this view. So no matter how small the window is when you're opening up, it is the first thing you should see in this view. I'm still not going to go into the warning messages just yet, so I'm going to delay that just a little bit longer while we explain everything else on this window first. I'm also going to present it in a slight, slightly backwards um, format because I'm going to skip the safety factor for a second and explain the weakest point. So what we have is a visualization of the weakest point within the array. So we can see here that the K1 bump and the number one K1 is the weakest point. We can see a blue color coding, and I'll explain the color coding later, but it's easy to see that this blue anchored point is our weakest point here. And underneath that, we can see, um, we can see a value. So the force actually on this point this is listed in decanewtons, which to some people might be a little bit of a new unit, something you're not used to working with. The reason we chose to work with this is to make a very large distinguish between internal forces and forces that we want that we talk about when we're um, referring to sources within SoundVision. We wanted to make that separate from the project units with the forces that you may want to give to external parties. So that could be a rigging company, could be a venue, production house, any of these. So anything you want to leave SoundVision and pass on, we wanted to make sure was in a separate unit to stop any confusion. So just to make this as clear as possible. So what does Deca Newtons mean? Well, there's another reason we chose this unit. And effectively, it's because we can equate or approximate one kilogram force to one decanewton. So if we see this figure here, we can approximate this value to 2,500 kilograms. So it's very easy to kind of get an understanding of what this, what this value actually means. Got it. So what is the weakest point? Well, ultimately, it's the point that is closest to reaching its load limit. So this is the point of interest to us here to see where the weakest point in the array is. And ultimately from this, we can define the safety factor. So the safety factor says that the weakest point can take this many multiples of that load before it hits its load limit. So it really, the safety factor is defined by the weakest point in the array. So just based on that, this singular point can take four times that. So 10,000 kilograms in this configuration just on that point before that will break. So there's a lot of safety in that. That doesn't mean the whole array can be four times the size, sure, not at all, just for that point. Right. And, and that's an important thing to remember is that the, the force there is not necessarily just an application of weight, right? It's also one of torque. So when you get into more extreme angles, you actually get to pretty extreme forces quickly, don't you? Correct. And we can see all this a little bit further on in this demonstration. So moving down, we have the physical properties. And we made a couple of updates to this section. So the more details, again, I'm going to hold off on explaining what this does. I just like to keep, we keep people waiting. That's it. Um, <laughs> We've removed, so previously we had two listings for the weight. We had the total weight and we had the enclosure weight. So the enclosure weight was just the total weight of the enclosures, excluding any rigging, so any bumps. Um, the two values close to each other, again, led to a little bit of, um, I would say mistakes could be made when referring to these values quickly. And we wanted to make this as very as simple as we could for the user. If they want to give the total source weight to a rigger or production house, they can refer to it very quickly here because there's one weight 
that's useful. And this is the weight of everything you see on screen right now, right? So this is the the enclosures, the bumper, the bar, but it's not the cable harness or the chain motors or the lifting equipment. Correct. So this is everything that Sound Vision knows about. So everything you see here, and again, to try and remove any ambiguity here, we've put the enclosures and frames in the label. Sure. So this should be as, I'd like to say, as clear as we can make it with this. Sure. We then go down, we have the max dimensions, which is this white box, so we can understand how the dimensions of our array. And we've added another piece of information here, which is the rear pickup point to max depth value. Okay. So how so far? So this is the rear pickup point to the very, the, the farthest oh. depth of the array. And why this is useful is to understand the clearance required to suspend this array. So whether you're looking at a PA tower, where you need to know, obviously, the depth, or you're flying this in front of a proscenium arch. That is, of course, a vital figure to know. And, of course, it's just as applicable if we're on one pickup point. As so we still have two, our sure. pickup point here. So this sure, so is a really useful figure. Yeah, that's really good. So like, if I'm in a theater and, a, and the upstage point of my array is, is only 40 centimeters from the wall... If that number exceeds 40, we're in trouble, isn't it? Exactly. Got it. So and if, it's at that... 20, if it's at 25, it's going to be snug, but we'll be okay. If it's at 38, you, you might want to think twice because it's going to be awfully close, isn't it? And if anything's off by a, a tiny little fraction, it's going to be a, a bump into the wall. Exactly. Um, so we have that. And then the last thing in our physical properties is the center of gravity position. So again... This is really useful for knowing if you can or can't achieve a sight angle. Sure. If, for example, we, in fact, I will go down here. If we do a negative sight angle here, oh, you see the warnings pop up, which I didn't really want to show too much. Our uh, center of gravity is in line with the rear pickup point here. Sure. If the center of gravity is outside of the pickup points, we get a warning because we can no longer achieve the sight angle. So it's a sure. guide to which way the array needs to move to be able to achieve the sight array. To the sight and that's also, also interesting information for certain rigging structures where they want to know where the weight is actually being applied to said tower. Um, and that's a simplification of the summary of where the weight will be. Is that correct? 100% uh, correct. Got it. Um, um, so the final section of this is our pickup points. And this is everything related to the actual pickup points for this source. So what we've added to this view is the coordinates for the pickup points. So this helps with referencing um, if we're giving these values to a rigger, if we're making rigging plots, we come to one, one location to be able to retrieve these values. So we have the rigging coordinates, we have the point separation, and we have the point loads, so we can see the load on each um, on each pickup point. What is worth clarifying here is that we do we talk about pickup points, not motor points. So these coordinates are for the actual anchored pickup points on the bar. So Soundvision doesn't know what height the motor's at or anything above the bar. So this is useful just for referencing where the pickup so point is. Is this the, the shackle point, if you will, on the bar, right? This is... Correct. Okay, so if I'm giving this to the rigger and I say, hey, our, our rigging point is, uh, what are you at probably here, 10 meters uh, uh, off the ground, um, I can't just say we need 10 meters of clearance on the lift capacity. We're going to need to add a, a buffer to that, which is the front stinger, which is the chain motor itself, which is the safety factor of the chain motor, the, the, the number of links they've got. So let's add two meters and we'll be okay. Correct. So that's really useful to know that yeah, when you give the uh, trim height of the actual um, the motor point, point yeah. you need to be aware if that that's the value useful to the rigging department. Yeah, and this is really great because there's been a number of times, Sam, I'm sure you and I have both done shows where the, the rigger maybe didn't quite get the height we thought they were going to get. Um, and one thing we can do is go measure the, the actual hook height um, with our disto, and we can look mm -hmm. in SoundVision and see what the difference is and go, 
we can make that work today. We'll we'll be okay. It's we'll just have to play it really careful, right? Yep. Um, but but it's one point two meters above our lift point. Okay, let's let's get that stinger as short as we possibly can, and it'll be okay. Or oops, guys, um, you have to repull that point because uh, unfortunately you're you're too short, and you can figure that out before the PA is at trim, which is always a or well, I guess not at trim in that situation, um, which is a bit of a disappointment. Yep. Um, so that brings me on to the safety messages. So you saw that pop up very briefly. And effectively, we've restructured how these are shown to the user within SoundVision. So we wanted to be a little bit more um, explicit with regards to the messages shown, what they mean, and make sure they're, they're understood as much as possible. So what we did is we looked around for how to do this. And we ended up using an American ISO standard for um, product safety information in product manuals, instructions, and other collateral materials. So what that means is we've introduced a color code to the safety messages. So let me go through what safety messages we actually have. So the first one that we will see, let's see if I can create this. First message we will see is a danger message. So this is our red uh, safety message that we see. And it's red to indicate this poses a risk to life. So the color coding, I know it seems extreme. The color coding is um, with regards to severity of the risk to life. So it's, it's basically saying this really should not be used. Don't even think about using this. It's to be as clear as we can with regards to the message. Um, and if we actually look at what this shows, is Alacoustics does not allow this configuration. So that's the first message we want to get across. And under, underneath this, we can see why this isn't allowed. So the safety factor is below the minimum recommended by applicable standards. So just to explain what that means, for all of our products, we have a safety factor which must be adhered to. Um, for this to be deemed safe. So for the majority of our products, we we insist a minimum of a four, uh, safety factor of four for this to pass, um, pass the safety um, tests. There's, there are certain products such as K1 that has a safety factor of three that is required. So the re requirement does change slightly However, this, some, this is something that you don't need to know off by heart as a user. SoundVision will take care of this. So what this is showing in this scenario is danger. So there's a real risk of a mechanical failure here. We can see why that is, and it's because the safety factor is below the minimum standard. So we need to change something here. If we go to our next scenario, which I'll see if I can recreate here with a K2 array. And I'm going to go to 25 enclosures. So the next kind of safety message we see is a warning safety message. So this is represented in orange. It's less severe than the danger, so it doesn't pose the same risk to life. However, it's still noted that this is something that L Acoustics does not allow. So mechanically, in theory, this is still safe to implement. However, it's something that we do not support at all. We've not tested um, outside of the max use limits. And this is both for, um, both with regards to mechanically, we've not implemented it ourselves. And also acoustically, nothing's been modeled to work. So the tools don't necessarily work with this. Um, we had to kind of put these limits in place to regain some kind of control here. So this sure. is still saying that we don't officially support this configuration. Sure. If we look in the documents, the maximum array length for K2 is 24 enclosures, right? That threshold, as you Correct. said, we've tested, we've validated, we've worked through many conceivable options. Um, so if you put in 28 or 25, there might not be any specific rigging element that has exceeded that safety factor, um, but it's beyond what we've, we've authorized. So it's just telling you, hey, we don't, we don't authorize this at all. Um, but there isn't a specific calculation that's exceeding 
its safety values. That is correct. Got it. The next kind of safety message that we're going to look at is a caution. So this is something that's basically trying to get your attention. You need to change something. So if I do, for example, a sight angle that's not possible, this comes under a caution because, again, it's yellow here. It doesn't pose any kind of threat to um, you know, safety and sure. risk of life. But it's saying that something here needs to be changed. So again, we get the clear message, what the problem is and what to do here. Sure. So, so it was so, not possible. Right. We either have to hang a few stagehands on the front of this bumper, right, um, and pull it down, um, uh, or maybe change our few. rigging. Yeah, quite a few. Or maybe change our <laughs> rigging deployment a little bit, right? Pick a pick a different rigging set. Exactly. And then we have the final warning message, which you may not see as much. Um, and this is effectively a notice. So this. Um, this will be visible in certain configurations. So, for example, if we add an A-series array in horizontal, we have we can see here that we have our two A15 lifts. However, if we make this a hybrid array and change one enclosure to a focus, we get a notice warning message. And what this says is effectively SoundVision can't model this specific configuration required for the configuration. So to make sure this is still safe for use, refer to the system user documentation. Got it. So this is to some extent a limit of the modelization that we can do in SoundVision. Um, however, it's worth noting that the max use limits are still there for this reason. So we can still find that this is safe to use. It's only if we exceed, for example, the max use limits that we will then see this warning. So we still guarantee this element Got of it. safety. Got it. So that's just really uh, um, when you run into maybe the limits of the software, the mechanical engine, the worlds that we've we've thought of, it's going to start to pop up. Hey, sorry, we're not sure about this. Please check with the documentation, uh, so on and so exactly. forth. Exactly. And one of the things that's worth noting from that is because we cannot model the specific hybrid configuration. Sorry, I'll do that. We've got to focus there. We notice that we can't see where the pickup points are anymore because we can't Got calculate it. where the points are. We can't calculate the load. This information is no longer displayed. So that Got is it. one limitation within this configuration. So I, I would imagine if we think of these four levels of warning, obviously the notice, we're not going to see that often if we're doing 99% of the events we would design. Um, hopefully we won't see danger things very often, right? Um, that we're doing something that's going to cause it to fail, um, albeit that might be something we'll do when we're, we're just exploring SoundVision to see what the limits are of a design. Um, yep. So we'll, we'll often see cautions, right, that, hey, you got to put a pullback on this. You're going to have to think differently, change your bumper config. Um, so that is exactly the perfect um, the point that we saw before when you said, how do I know what the warning is? And effectively, it was that... We didn't implement a pullback, and I added a very large negative sight angle when designing. And from this, we can see that it's not possible. So sure. this was the indication that we have a warning here. We can open the mechanics view to see what the warning is. And from here, we can understand that we need to either change the sight angle, so gravity is between the two pickups, or we need to move our pickup location by adding a pullback element. Right, and I would assume this is same thing. If I if I configured that K two bump with the the bar inverted because I thought I was doing an up tilt, and as my design changed, we're going to run into the same problem. If that specific configuration is not capable, um, even if it's not a pullback, we're going to get that same scenario, right? Exactly the same scenario. And the nice thing is that's the power of being able to visualize the center of gravity. So if we were to, as you said, invert the invert the frame there on the two pickups. And we're designing, we want to add a, a negative sight angle. We can still yeah. see that it's not possible. Sure. In fact, if I made that 25. But one of the options available to us is being able to reverse or the bar. invert again the bar to be able to achieve the pickup point. Sure. The negative of a Almost. negative is a positive. So 
if we invert the polarity twice, we're back to bar normal, I suppose, right? So exactly. Um, so that's the safety messages and you know the clarifications that we introduced with Sound Vision 3.6. We then can discuss the more details button. Ooh, what's that more I've details, been holding Sam? off what's what's for more? a little bit? <laughs> I want to see more details, Sam. So this is where we see effectively the, the power behind this new mechanics engine. So up until now, we've seen the implementation of the pullback. We've seen a um, this new layout of all the information. But when we click more details, we can see all of the calculations under the hood effectively. So if I click on this, first thing we see is a lot of arrows. What this is, is it's the force acting on every single connection point within the array. Hmm. So the first thing that we did with this view is we introduced the scale down and scale up forces icons. So this scales all the forces that we see here at the same time so that we can manually reduce this to something that doesn't necessarily yeah, sure. overlap mm -hmm. each other. We could have chosen to try and normalize these automatically. However, then we couldn't visually compare different sources and the size of the forces acting on them. Sure. What we have here is a small array with 12 K2. However, if we were to add K1 with, let's say, 20, we can see that the forces here are larger than on our K2 array. So if we scale those down so they're not overlapping. We have here, we can swap back and forth between the two sources now, visually comparing the size of the arrows. So what are we actually seeing here? Well, as I said before, these are the forces acting at every single connection point in our array. If we look at this back from the side, we have a table on the left that lists all the elements in the array, and we have the forces acting on, the, on these connection points, again listed in decanewtons, to indicate that these are internal forces. But what we see here are two different colors in the table and on the, rep, on the visualization. So at first glance, you might think it's just to separate the rear force and the front force. However, that's not the case here. This is actually showing the blue forces, which are under tension, and the gold forces, which are under compression. There's an easy way to actually understand what's going on without trying to think too much about what tension and compression means. If we go back to the simplified view and just scale up the forces a little bit, we can take any of the force here and understand what's happening if we remove it. So. If we take the top of the array and we have mm -hmm. our two pickup points, if we imagined for a horrific second, we took away this rear motor, instantaneously, this would move in the opposite direction with that force. It would obviously change over time and with gravity, but instantaneously, that's the effect that it would have. Similarly, if we were to do the same with gravity, imagine we remove that force and instantaneously the array would move upwards. This is exactly the same in the more details view. So I'm just gonna change this a little bit. If we imagine we have this array with our two points, and I'm gonna zoom into our top two enclosures and scale that down. So between these two enclosures, we have the rear force and we have this front force. If we imagined we were to take the pin out of this array at the back, effectively the join and below would move in the opposite direction. And we can think of that in real life. If we have a, an array suspended and we pull the pin out, it's gonna... boxes are obviously going to move downwards. Yep. However, the compression is, uh, we can think of this in exactly the same way. If we were to remove the pin at the front, the join and below would actually move the opposite direction. So we'd find the enclosures would touch the enclosure above. This is because compression is happening on, on this connection point here. If we zoom out a little bit and look at the array in the center of gravity, 
what we have is this turning force introduced by the enclosures at the bottom that end up effectively compressing all of the connection points along the bottom. This is where we can use a pullback element, for example, to try and lift the back of the array slightly, and it reduces the, it, it opens up these angles on the top. And this is something that we can now simulate fully. So if I get an array with a negative sight angle here, and we can see we can't achieve this now, so we need to implement a pullback. Currently, there is not much weight on our pullback. We can hardly see any force. And if we go back here, we can see there's 91 kilograms. However, we get some compression here. What we're able to do is, so previously we'd lift the pullback slightly to try and reduce the size of the compression forces and to try and open them up. Now, however, we can play with our pickup points to try and reduce these forces. So because we have a K2 bump on the top, we can move the pickup, the pickup hole, which effectively reduces the turning force on our pickup and in turn reduces where the weight is transferred to each enclosure. So if I move this along, we can see already that we've reduced the compression. We can move it along some more and we can see we've introduced tension. Hmm. So even just where we pick up on the main rigging element can change the sources, uh, the forces that we have internally. Yeah, the array is exactly the same and yet how the lift is being applied is changing, which is then changing where tension or compression exists within that array. Um, and let's think this can be advantageous for a couple of reasons, right? Like the rigging system of a K2 is rigid, but there's still minute tolerances so you can actually make a connection in the field. Um, and, and maybe that has a, an effect on the way the system is deployed from time to time. Uh, correct, completely. So we can find that if we were to have large curved arrays, for example, and we, we can, the beauty is we can actually simulate this now where we couldn't before. So if, if we take this as a prime example, we'll make this into a larger array. And I'm just very quickly going to put in <laughs> a very badly designed array here. Is, so let's pretend glorious, this is yeah. what we want to implement. Sure. Now, this is safe to do. We can see no warning. But there's several things worth noting here. The first thing is we have compression along the front, which means we get a small amount of give um, mm -hmm. amount of mechanical play here. The other interesting thing here is the size of the forces internally. So if we look right at the top, and as I said, we can equate the decanewtons to a kilogram. On this one point, we have a transfer of about 2,800 kilograms through this one point, even though the, the array only weighs 956 kilograms. Mm -hmm. So just because there's this rotational force added um, with each enclosure, it all gets passed up through the different connection points and applied here. The beauty of this is what we can do is implement a pullback to reduce I say reduce the mechanical play, we're effectively opening up those angles a little bit and reducing the compression forces. So we can add the pullback here. And now, rather than using the rear pickup point on the on the top, which has this mechanical, um, this, again, this rotational force, we can move this pickup point over the actual K2 bump as opposed to on the K2 bar. And sure. instant, instantly we can see the result. We can reduce the amount of compression. But even when we look at the internal forces, we reduce the internal force actually acting on this. And because of that, we end up increasing the safety factor sure. for the array we're implementing. Sure. So, if so we whilst wanna... this might not be the primary objective when designing, through this, we can make sure we're actually safer with what we do. We're allowed, to, we, we can reduce any mechanical play that, that is introduced on site, all by just simulating the use of a pullback and the forces internally. 
This is really cool. So it's obviously a huge number of benefits for the user, which is uh, the ability to properly model a pullback, the rigging point deployments, um, the loading forces, the safety factor. Does having this new engine, having the proper modelization of pullback give us any tangible benefits that, that, that actually will mean something? So we have, um, I mean, other than the methods and stuff that I've said going through, being able to reduce the play and increase, increase the safety factor, one of the main benefits, benefits that this has allowed us to do is to actually increase the max use limits for enclosures with a pullback. So whereas before, because we couldn't calculate the, the loads that we could do, we had to put a very conservative max use limit of, for example, 12 enclosures with a K series. Whereas now we can calculate this, we've increased these max use limits. So as you can see here, for a K2, we have a max, uh, max use limit of 16 enclosures. So this can be used, again, in any configuration that SoundVision deems safe. So we could, as you can see here, we can implement our 16 enclosures. We can implement a pullback. And I have the warning because this is not possible, possible. sight angle. <laughs> but we, we could literally put minus 90 degrees with this wow. flat. And this is safe for use. Wow. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a design. Yeah, sure. But because we can now fully calculate the loads on this, we can pass this, you know, we can be confident that this is safe for use. So we have increased max use limits for K series. And A series now goes up to eight enclosures, I believe. That's great. So this is a real benefit for the user who is doing these projects where in the past we said the maximum use for the K2 rig bar or Kara pullback was 12 boxes. Um, we can we can extend that out um, even in this most extreme example, which is not the most applicable that you're showing us on screen. Um, we also now can can look at, as you said, and we can get an idea of when the compression tension forces are going to fight us a little bit because because there is that little bit of play that that exists, and and that'll help us know if if we're going to end up at a slight deviation, if we're going to end up at a huge amount of compression on a pin um, and an equal out loadout. Um, this is this is really cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the mechanical. This looks great. So we see the the forces, we see the compression, we see the you showed off the the safety messages. Um, I can see that you showed off the physical properties um, as well as the pickup points. Um, and I see as well. Do I notice that when you have a, a pullback, it actually shows us the pullback coordinate as one of the two pickup points um, and, and indicates that. That is correct. So we can see that as soon as we go, as soon as we add the pullback, we get the, the very clear clarification that we have our front coordinate and we have a pullback coordinate. So the same as we see in our loudspeaker data where we refer to the pullback. So we get a very clear explanation as what this coordinate is for. Sure. And, and the separation of the two, so you can even on the map here, you're, you're doing your, your big awards show or your, your special event and you know that the front pickup point is going to be at this coordinate and then we need a I can't quite read that on my, my zoom screen here, but it looks like, uh, uh, what is that about a two meter separation there? Is it even more? Uh, 2.55 meters. 2.55 meters. So a pretty big separation so, yeah. between those two points. Yep, yeah, exactly. But it, it, we now actually have this, so it's very easy to work with this. If we can't bridle between points in the roof and we know we have a fixed separation, implementing a K2 bar on the top allows us, of course. Oh, wow. Look at that to you alter this that. so that we can get the dead hang in the roof. <laughs> so you can play it that way too, can't you? You know that this has to be, the rear is is in this spot and the front needs to go forward uh, uh, 20 centimeter. You can just start shifting the, the front point until you hit that mark. Exactly. So we That's can be fun... flexible on on both sides of that. That's a fun uh, load and hack right there. So um, hashtag load and hack, uh, Sam Proctor, good job. Um, I think the last thing, you know, is is you showed us all these tools on how it works. I think it'd be interesting to dig into a little bit of a practical design. I mean, I worked something up. I don't know if you want me to, to show you that real quick in, in something I've actually done in the past. Uh, let's see what you got. All right. So don't anyone judge me, Sam, especially. <laughs> just um, me. Just just you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to share my screen here to everyone. Here we go. Um, I think we should be seeing that. 
So this yep. is a famous theater here in Los Angeles. It's currently known as the Dolby Theater um, in Hollywood, right on Hollywood Boulevard. Have you ever been there? I've not myself, no. Oh, all right. So if, if anyone's done the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you walk right past this. And they do quite a lot of award shows. And, and for me, an award show is a perfect example of using a pullback um, because, of course, uh, the sound must not be seen. Um, it's not about the speakers in the room. Unfortunately, it's not much about the audience in the room. It's about the 12 million people at home who are watching on TV. But the PA has to perform something really interesting, which is um, it needs to make sure that everyone who's sitting down in these seats where they're about to win an award can hear um, very clearly what's going on. And we want to do as much uh, rejection on stage as possible. So this leads us to a couple of things. Uh, thing number one is the PA tends to go really high and point straight down because we want to not be seen but heard. Um, and two, we want to make sure we have very little energy on stage. So we end up flying really big arrays. We don't need the power. It's literally uh, a vocal lift system with light playback. It's not like we're thumping music in here for a, an EDM concert. Um, so we end up doing these really huge like K2 type arrays is really common. Um, so here's 12 K2 and I'm pretty much just covering the orchestra and a little bit of the first uh, balcony with this. And it's a great scenario where if I were to take off this rig bar here, yeah, uh, auto filter is not going to like that. Um, and I switch this back to two pickup points and my target angle was voila, right about there. Um, we're way beyond what we can do from the bumper itself. In fact, it's flashing red. Uh, you did give me that warning message and I'm going to switch over to the mechanics view here and say sight angle is impossible. So thankfully nothing is dangerous. It's just that I've designed something that can't be done. Um, I, I do like to point out, Sam, and I don't know, you didn't get into this, but if we take the total array weight, this is 730 kilogram, um, and we subtract that from the rear weight, which is 1,017. So let's just say we need to hang 300 kilogram worth of stage hand on the front to achieve this. So that's, uh, in America, that's, uh, three, three stage hands. Um, in, uh, in, uh, France, it's probably four. So that's what <laughs> you have a lot more time to think about all of this than uh, most people on a load in. I'll give you that. Yeah. So um, we we just gotta we gotta we gotta suspend the 300 kilogram negative. So that's actually the force negative there is is 300 kilogram in this case. Um, but if we put that pullback back on there, that K2 rig bar, it'll add that in. And real quickly, we see the the, the weight distribution here um, is now the the 589 kilogram on this point and 162, which is which is quite okay for a balanced load. Um, we're not going to deal with uh, any uh, 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 swinging around, for example. Um, and that's what we're trying to get here is, is, is this guy to do this. It's interesting. This bottom box is actually beyond 90, right? So we're actually here beyond 90. Um, and remember, uh, the people in the first few rows are the ones who win the award. So it's actually really important that they hear their name called, um, but that they, uh, uh, the PA is out of that camera shot. Um, and, and it is quite high up. So this is super common. Um, what we'll often do in these award show applications is, is a, a PA source that's really targeted for this area where the winners are going to sit. And we can EQ that to death to make sure it doesn't impact the microphone feed yet keep intelligibility. Because um, once again, it's all about the podium on stage and the broadcast. And then we'll add a delay for the audience that's in the rest of the house. So in this case, um, for this particular show, I hung another 12K3. It seems like a lot again, but once again, we want to make sure there's very little energy coming off the bottom of this array. So we make it as long as we can comfortably get to, to cover up on top. Um, for this particular application, there isn't a pullback on here. We don't need that. We can take a look at the mechanical view. Um, our K3 is quite nicely uh, deployed. The safety factor is plenty high, almost 15 to 1. Um, so that's uh, many times above what uh, it needs to be, um, and as well as uh, many times above uh, uh, its uh, ultimate limit there. So I'm going to turn on the left and right here as well, and let me hide these for the moment, and let's just render this real quick. And we'll see the last thing we might need to have is a little bit of a waterfall in the middle if there's a, not quite enough energy. All right, so just taking a look here, um, overall SPL distribution is pretty good. Um, this is a weight SPL, and what I can see is it's just a little bit hot right here, a little bit weak right there. Um, so we might want to think about 
actually panning this out a little bit if any award winners or people that are important are sitting there. So I would get that seat map from the show and go, hey, is the you know the producer of the year, director of the year sitting over here or are they going to be sitting right on these aisles? If someone's sitting over there, I might want to actually pan this out a little bit or move it out and then add a fill in the middle here. So what we're actually going to do here is take a look and add just a little fill because once again, the most important part here is they can hear their name called. Um, it's really a bummer when someone wins and they didn't catch that message or that announcement. So if I just step out and add a source, I'm going to do some Kara 2. Um, and we're going to move it downstage quite a bit. And we're going to go up quite a bit. That's a little too high there. Voila. Still out of camera shot there. And we actually only need to cover this section right here. But once again, we want a lot of boxes, as silly as it is, just so we have pattern control as low as possible. And I'm going to move the D-min. D-ref is not really that relevant. I'll explain why here in a second, because I'm actually going to set the gain or SPL distribution that I'm allowing from ref to max and ref to min to be zero. So the, the target here for auto display will be to have as little as possible. So our mechanical distribution of energy, we've now actually gotten to be more or less flat, which is great. Um, but we're getting a warning. Once again, same warning as before, which is does not allow. Uh-oh, safety factor is beyond. That's interesting. Oh, look at that. Let's go ahead and put a bar on there. Still, safety factor is below. So this is definitely an indication where we need the pullback. And as soon as we've done that, we've actually increased the safety factor quite a lot, right? Before that point, we had a huge amount of torque being applied to some of this rigging. Now we're in a situation where there's much less. We're at uh, quite a high safety factor of 7.6. And let's set this all to 35. Oops. All to 35. And I'm even going to run some auto filter on it. Great. And let's go ahead and run that real quick and see what that does. Very good. So in this particular indication or situation now, we've got a really good SPL distribution, a weight for everywhere our award winner tickets are gonna be, which is really important. And then we'll add delays up here for all the people who are attending the award show, the, the big award show up on top who are there as, as fans. Okay, so that looks like quite a large uh, K2 array you've got there. It's wrapped around quite a lot for the site angle. How easy is that going to be to actually fly an install on site? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so I, I think what's fun, and, and I've, I've done this all the time when I fly arrays, is I think about how we're going to deploy it and maybe if in the means of deployment we're in a situation where um, it's it's had an issue, right? Um, so let me go ahead and give you a quick demo of, of how we want to check this. So first thing is real simple here in the physical deployment, we see this, um, we've, we've got a pullback, but of course the pullback is the last thing that's added. And what happens when we take that pullback off is the array is going to want to swing forward, right? And there it is swinging forward. In fact, I'm going to hide the rest of these. There we go. Um, so it's going to want to swing forward. So right away we can see we need to have a pretty large physical space. I need to have a deck built um, that is that is quite quite deep, right? The depth of this is almost three meters. So for sure we need to have three meters worth of space and more for the crew to work. Because remember, um, lucky us, we get to fly this PA on top of the seats here. Oops, there we go. We get to fly this PA on top of the seats here. So we actually have to build a deck that's at least three meters deep. Um, as I start taking enclosures off, the next four, one, two, three, four, show me how big this array is going to be when it's just four boxes. We can see that we're still safe. Um, we can see that still we need to have a depth of 2.3 meters. Um, and as I go back, one, two, three, four, the first cart is going to be quite extreme, isn't it? Um, it's going to be a, a fun and silly looking thing when that gets flown. Um, but won't be a problem. It's within our space constraint. Um, it's not going to cause any significant issues in flying it. 
What's neat I like is with the undo, you can actually just put all of this back, including the pullback, and watch it the whole way through and make sure we're not going to run into any challenges. 11, 12, we're okay. Put the pullback on. Put the pullback on. Put the pullback on. There we go. And voila. Oh, that's a neat trick. Yeah, it's a fun one. I definitely um, always, when I fly PAs, um, especially when you get to really big ones, whether that's large with a pullback, um, large uh, without a pullback, it's good to kind of say, hey, what's my, what's my tolerance for safety? Same thing here. I might even want to say, what happens if someone accidentally runs the motor a little too long and does too extreme of a pullback? Is that going to cause any safety issues? So what if we went to accidentally minus 30, not 390, um, minus 30 here? And we're not throwing any red flags. So I always like to just know if we go just a little bit too far, are we at the limit? And a simple way to check that is is by just entering a, a slightly larger and more uh, silly sight angle um, than maybe what your target is and making sure it's okay. So it's definitely a, a good thing to do. So I think that's it. Um, we have a group on uh, our social channels who are helping to answer questions now. So I guess if anyone has any questions about pullback, they can reach out on social media. Um, Sam, they can contact uh, the Sound Vision team, how at L Acoustics? So that's soundvision at lacoustics.com. If you send an email, we'll be happy to answer any questions, um, give any help that we can. This is great. Um, I'm really excited. Are there, this is Sound Vision 3.6. I'm assuming the next thing to come out is Sound Vision 3.7. And uh, any, any, guess. any, anything you want to tell us, you want to give us any tips? I'm afraid there's absolutely nothing I can give away at this point, but there's some, um, <sighs> all I can say is there's some good features coming up. I can't wait. Um, hopefully Sam, we get to do this again, uh, soon with sound vision 3.7. If you guys have any requests, features, we'd love to hear from you. If you, uh, uh, come up with some really fun designs you want to show off, send them, tag us, uh, and, uh, put it on social media. Um, I want to say thanks, Sam, for joining us today, and I uh, can't wait to do this again. Thank you. I look forward to it. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Cheers. Goodbye.